All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up. We're going to be in Psalm 34, verse 8. For some of you, you may have memorized this verse. What a great verse in the Bible. And we're talking this week, rest God's way. Rest God's way. Where do you find rest? Where do you find rest? Is it working? Are you getting rest for your soul? You know, you can give your body, your biological frame rest, but your soul is still anxious and worried and, and filled with fear and, and doubt. Or you can have rest for your soul that comes from the inside, permeates all the way to the outside. That's what God wants. And today here in Psalm 34, verse 8, we're going to talk about how rest God's way comes from experiencing God. There's something to be said for someone that has walked with the Lord, actually walked with them. Not saying you prayed to receive Jesus 20, 30 years ago and then haven't really done business with him since. But a man or a woman who's walked with the, with the Lord, there's something to be said for that person, right? Uh, in the Old Testament, we see these genealogies before the flood of men and women walking uh, uh, or, or living long periods of time. And you see that. You see so-and-so lived for 900 years and then they died and so-and-so lived. But then it gets to a man named Enoch, it doesn't say he lived this long. It says Enoch walked with God. There is a difference. And there's something about experiencing God, staying the course, sticking close to him, finding rest with the Lord. Experience with him changes everything. I love this story. It's two pals. They're sitting in a pub watching the 11 o'clock news. A report comes on about a man threatening to jump from the 20th floor of a downtown building. One friend turns to the other and says, I'll bet you 10 bucks the guy doesn't jump. He said, it's a, it's a bet, agrees his buddy. A few minutes later, the man on the lead jumps, so the loser hands his pal a $10 bill. I can't take your money, his friend admits. He said, why? He says, well, I saw him jump earlier on the 6 o'clock news. <laughs> his friend, though, said, me too, said the other buddy, but I didn't think he'd do it again. Uh, you know, hopefully you're a little brighter than that fella. But listen, experiencing God, resting in the Lord. Where does that come from? Listen to this, Psalm 34, verse 8. It says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Can you say that right now? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And then he says, blessed or oh, how happy is the man who trusts in him. This is the key to experiencing God. It's tasting. It's seeing that the Lord is good. You know, we have, what, five senses, but I think we have a sixth sense as well, a spirit sense. You know, if you like the movie Spider-Man, he has a spider sense. He can tell when something is off, something is happening. I think we have a sixth sense, a spiritual sense to taste and to see that the Lord is good. I believe man's greatest need, greater than for food or water or shelter or sunlight or oxygen, his greatest need, his eternal need, is God. To taste and see that the Lord is good. That word taste, it means, is a ta'am in the Hebrew. It's taste, but not food. It's more of a perceiving taste to experience God with your spirit. And see, not with physical eyes, but with the mind's eye, with the heart's eye, to see that the Lord is good, and the Hebrew word is tub. It's beautiful, bountiful, loving. God wants you to taste and see who he really is, to find rest for your souls in him, to experience God, to walk with God. That's his desire for you. That's his desire for me. That's his desire for all of us. And he says, blessed, or oh, how happy is the man who trusts in him. What does it mean to trust in the Lord? What does it really mean? Does it mean, well, I trust God to say it a lot? Not so much. We can say things that we don't do. What it means in the Hebrew is chasa, chasa, C-H-A-S-A-H. It means to flee for protection, to confide in. To flee for protection or to confide in. You'll know what, who you really are trusting and what you're really trusting in based on where do you flee? Where do you run to? Where, who do you confide in? Is it the Lord? Is it his presence? To go there to trust in him. Oh, how happy, the psalmist says, is the man who trusts in him. Listen, 
You have to taste. In God's economy, you have to taste before you see. We usually like to see, and then we go, hmm, that looks good. I'll taste. But God says, in my economy, you have to taste first, and after you taste and you experience that, you, you taste the Lord is good, then you'll see. Then you'll see. You'll, you'll begin to watch his blessings blossom in your life. So may that be the case today for you. And Father, I pray for each one of your people that they would continue to experience you, that they would rest in you today, no matter where they're at, no matter what they're busy about doing, that they would rest in you, they would find shelter in you, they would trust in you, and that they would taste, Lord, perceive you today, that you're good, and they would see your goodness, even here in the land of the living. And Father, I pray that for them in Jesus' name. Amen.